Hi everyone, this is Woody from Splice Training in Canada, author of Media Composer 6, Professional Picture and Sound Editing, the official courseware for MC201, taught by Avid Learning Partners worldwide, and the book's available on Amazon.com. In this uh, video tutorial, based on content from Lesson 3 of the book, I'd like to show you a little bit about reformatting content. So on my timeline, I've got material that was shot originally on film. It uses an aspect ratio of uh, about 1.85, which is a little bit more than 16 by 9. And what I want to do is restore the regular 16 by 9 aspect ratio to it. So, so to do that, I'm going to use a technique called record side reformatting. In record side reformatting, you take an effect from the reformat category of the effect palette. In this case, it's going to be the pen and scan effect and you apply it to one of your clips, like this, and then you edit it in the effect mode. And then in effect mode, you've got two sections that you need to specify at least. The first section is the aspect ratio of your original footage. That's the active picture area. So for me, it's this inside box, not the outside area where the time code and edge code information is. And then your second box is what you want. So the first box is what you've got. And I have 1.85 material that was shot on 35 millimeter film. The second option is what you want. And you can see just by setting it to 1.85, we have this little box that's shown up now that says if you start off with this material but you want 4x3, then the content inside this box is going to be scaled up. When it plays back, it's going to look like this. I have to dissolve there, but ignore the dissolve for now. What I actually want though is not to do a 4x3 extraction. What I want to do is make it into 16x9 anamorphic, the regular 16x9 anamorphic. So now it says, okay, I'll take this inside box once again, but it's full width and I'm going to make it stretched. So uh, the aspect ratio of the performers is preserved. It's going to look like this. And then what you can do is you can apply the same effect to the next track or the next clip and the next clip and the next clip. I could just drag it over from here in the effect editor, apply it to here, take another one over, and this applies it with the existing settings. So now when I play it back in my timeline, I get this. Dissolving through the effect like that. Once again, it's going to dissolve through the effect with the reformat on the next shot like this for these establishing shots of Three Needles, the movie. Again. And then I have to apply the same thing to the next shot and the next shot, and that's, that's really tedious. So one of the things that's kind of expected that you're going to do when you use reformat effects is not necessarily apply them on individual shots, particularly if you want to change your whole sequence, but rather apply them to a track. So you can apply any effect or almost any effect you like to an empty track. So what I'm going to do is make a new video track. Now I could just make a new video track normally like this, it's V2, but what I actually personally prefer to do is make a upper video track. That is to say I'm going to make new video track again, but this time I'm holding down the option key. If you hold down the option key when you make a new track, you get this dialog box that allows you to choose what the track number will be. So I'm going to make track 20. So I like to preserve tracks 20 to 24 for utility functions like reformats, time codes, uh, watermarks, uh, what else do I do up here, um, safe limiters. So I'll put 20 as my track number. Now I have V20. I'm going to throw pen and scan on top of that right up here. And we'll display it. And now that I'm monitoring track 20 and track 20 has this effect applied to it, this effect will follow through or be applied to everything underneath it. Now when I go into the effect editor, I'm going to say that my source footage is 185, my target or my destination is 16 by 9. And now you can see that it's actually applied to everything, everything in the timeline. And if I drop down and view just V1, the effect is not being applied. Change my video monitoring to track 20 and below by tapping it by track 20, and it's being applied automatically to everything underneath it. 
doesn't hinder anything that's underneath it. If I wanted to do a 4x3 extraction, well, that's pretty easy to do too. What I would first do is configure my composer monitor to be 4x3. So to do that, I could uh, right click in the composer monitor, choose project aspect ratio 4x3, and then go back into my settings for track 20 with my pan and scan. Say what I'd like out of this is a 4x3. Well, now when I play it back, it's the proper aspect ratio for 4x3. Anything outside of here is going to be cropped. Anything out here is going to be cropped. Up there, cropped. Cropped in the top two. And for the most part, that, that could be fine. There's going to be some shots that aren't going to work out very well because the positioning of the camera was, or the composition of the camera was set up for 16 by 9 or 1.85 to 1. And now I've got just 4 by 3. So things that on the, on the far edges um, might be cut off, like this character here. Or maybe you want to see more of the vehicle that she's opening the hatch for. So what you can do to customize this further is go back into effect mode. You can just drag the box. I can say, okay, well, I actually prefer this. Then when you play back, the shot is focused on the left-hand side. You don't even see that other character that was on the right-hand side anymore. But that means that this one shot is good, but this next shot might be very, very far off. Or this shot might be far off. In fact, if I wanted to see him at the beginning, he's just being cropped. So that's not very good. So the way that you fix this is a, it's a pretty clever technique that Avid's designed. What you do is you enable the track that has your pan and scan on it. You enable the track that has all of your clips on it. You disable anything in between. So if I did have V2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or whatever, um, I would just turn those uh, off for now. And then Media Composer in the effect editor presents you with the option called Subdivide. And if you look at the timeline when I press this, you're going to see that it compares the edits on the first track lower than the track that I'm on. So it's going to compare the edits on V1. And it's going to take those edits and add them to V20, like this. Now what I can do is just move through each shot and say, okay, this shot, uh, let's have it use this composition. And this shot, use this composition. The next shot is going to use this composition. And then you just go through every shot and set it up exactly as you want it. And then when you play back, you have a 4 by 3 extraction from your original 1.85 or 16 by 9 content, and you've adjusted every shot so that you're getting the best composition for the scene. Once again, this technique is called record side reformatting. You can find more details in Media Composer 201, which is a course that I teach uh, throughout Canada at Splice Training Centers in Vancouver, Halifax, and Toronto. Or you can buy the book, uh, Media Composer 6 Advanced Picture and Sound Editing. Or you can uh, take Media Composer 201 at any number of Avid Learning Partners worldwide. Stay tuned for the next lesson, source-side reformatting. Thanks.